there may not be as much excitement for day two of training camp as there is for day one, but there was plenty to look forward to and plenty we learned on day two of training camp. I'll tell you what that is. Welcome to Believer's Talk. My name is Jerome. Welcome as we continue to keep you updated on what's going on in training camp, guys. Day two of training camp was today, and there was some excitement in the air. Again, football is back, so you still got to be excited about that. A little bit of the injury bug hitting the Buffalo Bills. Not as bad as some other places. We'll get into that and other news and notes about position battles as well. Before we do that, however, I want to remind everyone, if you haven't already, hit that subscribe button, guys. Hit that subscribe, subscribe button. And again, go to our Twitter page. Follow us on Twitter, link in the description below. And guys, now is the perfect time to do that. As I've been saying, we have teamed up with www.bewarethestampede.com. And if you go onto that website, there are plenty of ways to log entries to win this Andre Reed mini helmet. So make sure you log your entries, subscribe, follow, tweet, you know, the mailing list for bewarethestampede.com. Join that. There are plenty of ways to log your entries as well, and then you will be entered to win this Andre Reid signed helmet. Guys, you can you can uh, start now and tweet all the way to the end of train camp and get an entry every single day. So go ahead and go to the website, www.weatherstampede.com, and find out more about it there. But again, guys, we want to talk about day two of training camp. But before we do that, I want to... Real quick, have a serious moment, and we started training camp this way today as we learned that uh, Kyle Pecco's wife uh, has stage 3 Hodgkin's lymphoma. Uh, that's how we started the day, and, and you know, it always makes you take a step back, and as Coach McDermott says, kind of makes you realize what's important in life, and you know, I can understand why Kyle Pecco had a tough time uh, leaving his home. I understand why, you know, he took that extra day, why he was, you know, uh, released by the Bills for the extra day or whatever you want to say. Um, you know, we, we've been hearing so much about these stories, you know, whether you go back to Pancho Billa, you know, now with uh, with Kyle Pecco's wife, and, and the stories go on and on and on. And it's really unfortunate that this keeps coming up. You know, we just got done with uh, Jimmy V Week with ESPN, you know, uh, Jimmy V, Star Foundation for Cancer Research. Guys, it's never too late to donate. You, We all know someone or we we are personally someone who's been affected by uh cancer and you know it's just this this disease that keeps taking more and more now luckily we're getting better right i mean i mean the success rate uh the survival rate uh is getting higher and higher and higher but we should not be satisfied until success uh rate is 100 percent so you know to kyle pecco and his wife and his family we, we obviously wish them the best and one thing that's great about bill's mafia is we're going to be your family like we are your family so um to them we would just wish them the best and we hope that she has a speedy recovery we'll keep her in our prayers and thoughts and you know whatever bill's mafia can do we're going to do it because that's how strong Bill's Mafia is. If you watch the Embedded series, you, you heard Kyle Williams talk about what Buffalo, what playing for Buffalo meant to him. And guys, that's true. That's real. That's something that uh, that can't be fake. And that's what this team means to all of us in Bill's Mafia. And that includes every family of every player of this team. And Kyle Pecco, you are a member of the Bill's family. And that includes your family as well. So we send out our deepest uh, you know, prayers thoughts, wishes, and we're going to be with you and we're going to celebrate with you when she beats this thing. So we wanted to start with that, of course, our thoughts go out to them. And obviously none of this matters uh, in the grand scheme of things, in the grand scheme compared to this, none of this matters. But we do have to move on and do have to talk about a little football here because training camp still did happen. We still did have to day two of training camp. And we want to talk about what happened in training camp today. Again, today, prior to training camp, Sean McDermott spoke with the press. Uh, some of the key nuggets from that press conference, he compared the uh, wide receiver group to the Smurfs, uh, basically saying that the, they know how to find open spaces, right? They live in small villages, and they know how to find open spaces and small and small gaps and things like that. So he compared our wide receiving core to the uh, to the Smurfs, and that's that could be a good thing. It's a pretty good comparison there. And then also, something else we 
learned, a little nugget that we learned during this press conference is they are talking about moving Cody Ford from tackle to guard using that versatility, which is one of the reasons why they drafted him, one of the reasons why they wanted him so badly. If you watch that uh, that uh, draft room coverage on Embedded and even before that, we saw some of it because of his versatility. Now, they're not sure how much they want to put on him as a rookie, which we can understand that. And today he did stay at that tackle position instead of moving into guard. But we'll talk more about the offensive line in a little bit. But Sean McDermott did talk about that also, Jason Kroom today, we didn't learn this in press conference, but we learned this as the day went on. Jason Kroom out today, unfortunately, due to a hamstring injury. So we do get a little bit of the injury bug. Again, not as bad as some other teams. I mean, look at the Giants, right? You look at Coleman, why we see for the Giants, tore his ACL today. Yesterday, Shepard broke his finger. So obviously, two guys going to miss a lot of time. Coleman going to miss the whole season. Um, so it's not as bad as some other teams but we do have to be like looking into that and making sure that our guys stay healthy. We need to do everything we can do to make sure that our guys stay healthy. Jason Kroom was bothered with that hamstring injury uh, back in OTAs. And of course, we know about Tyler Croft still with the broken foot. So he wasn't there. Excuse me. So those were the two absences. But that left room for Dawson Knox to really step up. And he stepped up day one. He stepped up again day two. Now, they said that Lee Smith did spend some time with the first unit as well. Uh, but Dawson Knox did have a good day from what I'm hearing. And we look forward to continuing to see that. Uh, you know, we're a little bit surprised to see Lee Smith maybe uh, getting some first team reps. But you don't know what that tight end room is going to look like uh, come the start of the regular season. So you want to make sure that you're getting a few guys in with reps. Some guys were surprised yesterday that Jason Kroom got the uh got to work with the ones um but now it actually benefits because now at least he has he has that work in uh now that he's out with that hamstring injury hopefully it's nothing serious hopefully he can rest up a little bit and be back in time for the preseason wouldn't rush him back i mean the good news is now all the tight ends jason groom's the one that was with josh allen last year so it makes you wonder just exactly how much uh you know work they need to do in training camp maybe they can get down in preseason not the worst for him to miss a week or two to get uh healed from that hamstring injury again a lingering injury uh from ota so we'll see what happens there First on the field, again, just like yesterday, David Tyree, uh, Tyree, or I'm sorry, Tyree Jackson. I always do that. I don't know why I do that. I think I did that in a previous episode too. Uh, but Tyree Jackson, quarterback from Buffalo. Um, <clears throat> so it's good to see him first on the field both days. Just someone, you know, he knows he has work to do, right? Working with Ken Dorsey, the quarterback coach, looking pretty solid the first two games, right? Or first two days of training camp. Looking pretty solid, uh, feeling comfortable, and, you know, there was an interview with him after training camp, and he talked about that a little bit, how he's feeling all right and how he enjoys being out there uh, first and, and just getting some work in. Before all the cameras really show up, before the crowds really show up, it's good to get that extra work in. Uh, so it's good to see that as well. Um, Ed Oliver still on the second team, uh, getting a little better, progressing. Um, but, you know, they talked about this over at Hashtag Sports. So, guys, again, uh, Mario from Hashtag Sports is actually here or at the at the uh, at training camp today. So, I'm sure they're going to do something with that today. So, you want to check that out. Again, hit that subscribe button if you haven't already subscribed to Hashtag Sports. Paul, Mario do a great job of breaking things down. Again, Mario was at training camp today. So I'm sure he was looking out for certain things. But when they talked about this yesterday, you know, Ed Oliver's coming in a different situation. Ed Oliver didn't come from a big five conference college, right? He came from Houston, not bad school, uh, but he didn't have that elite competition. You know, they talked about Trey White. They talked about Tremaine Edmonds. They talked about some of the guys that were supporting and plugging in as starters right away. They didn't play in, that power, in those power five conferences. And also... In Houston, he was at the nose tackle, right? He was asked to play nose tackle. Well, in Buffalo, he's asked to play defensive tackle, not nose tackle. Nose tackle. A little bit of a difference. Just some things you have to learn. There was talk about how small he was coming out of the draft. So just trying to get him to learn some things before they move him up to that starting starting line. Now, does that mean that he will be on the starting line come the start of the regular season? Not sure, but I don't think it will be long after that. You see Ed Oliver in. As it started, we know he's going to rotate in anyway. Excuse me. So we'll see what happens there. Um, Kevin Johnson, really looking good at the cornerback position. They're talking about him possibly uh, being that number two corner 
between him and Levi Wallace right now, but he did get, Kevin Johnson did get some first team reps today, and he really looked good making plays and just being a lightning ball out there and being able to close quickly and just not, you know, close any separation that the wide receiver gets. And that's very important at the cornerback position. You know, they talked about how good Levi Wallace was last year, but he didn't make any plays as far as turnovers uh, or making any big plays. And if Kevin Johnson can be that playmaker, then that's what they're going to look for. They're going to plug him in at the CB2 position and see how he does. Again, former first-round draft pick, had some bad luck with injuries over in Houston. So let's see what he can do uh, now that he has a fresh start. Good defensive team, right? You talk about Sean Mc Coach McDermott. You talk about Coach Leslie Frazier. Defensive-minded guys. We all saw what they did with Trey White, making him one of the top corners in the league, in my opinion. Let's see what they can do for Kevin Johnson. And then you move over to the offensive side of the ball. You talk about that wide receiver uh, position, right? Now, David Sills and Duke Johnson, neither one of them seeing much of the field. So, uh, you know, there, there there was a lot of talk about which one of those two is going to make the team. Will they both make the team? Uh, right now, uh, it's looking like neither of them might make the team because neither one of them has seen much playing time with the ones or twos. You know, there's talk that they're going to have to play out uh, when they're playing with Tyree Jackson, maybe in the preseason, to get recognized because they're just not seeing too much time on the field. But someone who is, who no one was talking about in the preseason, and that's easily a uh, wide receiver for the Buffalo Bills, he's getting some playing time, leading some people to believe that maybe, just maybe, he's fighting for that roster spot and not um, David Seals, Duke Johnson. We'll see if the Bills are trying to get David Seals on the practice squad. I think that's going to be hard to do. There's lots of teams out there, New York Giants, just speaking of earlier, who are going to be looking for some wide receiver help Looking for some wide receiver depth, and David Sills can add that. So maybe uh, we need to rethink something about David Sills if we do like him. Uh, maybe he won't be able to make it to the practice squad, uh, but is that worth using a roster spot for him? We'll find out as the train camp moves on. You know, we did think of, uh, about that about Robert Foster day one. Didn't get much playing time, but day two, he did see a lot more playing time with the ones with Josh Allen. So we'll see how things progress as training camp goes on. Still lots of time, guys. There's still, I think, 11 days of training camp left. So we're going to see what happens uh, as training camp progresses. Again, they're probably going to start with pads tomorrow. Uh, so that's something to look forward to. And, of course, we will keep you updated right here on Believers Talk. So you want to make sure if you haven't, hit that subscribe button. Hit that subscribe button, guys. And what did you guys think about day two? We'll go over some more notes here. We'll talk about more some more position, position battles, including offensive line okay let's talk about the offensive line guys if if you like the offensive line the way it is now just kind of leave that in the comment section and say yes this is the starting five so let me tell you the starting five that started today i know a lot of people like the starting five i like the starting five too i think this might be the starting five come the start of the regular season so at left tackle we had dan dawkins i think that's an easy one uh to to say i think that uh, we have Deion Dawkins at left tackle. There is word that Ty Nseki did play some left tackle, uh, you know, during during some reps both today and yesterday in practice. But I, I still think Deion Dawkins' job is pretty safe. Just competition never hurt anybody. And also, it's good to, again, have that depth right at left tackle. Ty Nseki could be a good backup to Deion Dawkins. But I do think Deion Dawkins is going to be the starting left tackle. Then you got Quinn Spain at left guard. Quinn Spain has been the left guard both day one and day two. Uh, so it's really good to see him out there. I think he did a good job both days. Uh, and again, just to solidify the offensive line, Coach McDermott talked about yesterday, the sooner the better to make sure we know who the starting five is. Center, I think that's the easiest position to call here, and that's going to be Mitch Morse. Uh, Mitch Morse just signing him from Kansas City. I think it was our biggest free. I know he was our biggest free agent signing as far as money goes. So we know that we have the intent of having him as our starting center. Now, right guard, there was a switch today. We had Spencer Long at right guard instead of John Feliciano. John Feliciano moves down to the second team, and then Spencer Long moves into the first team. Like this switch, I really like Spencer Long a lot. I think he's going to add something to this offensive line. And that right right tackle, you had Cody Ford. Again, we did hear in the pre-game, in the pre-training camp presser, Sean McDermott talking about moving him to guard potentially. Uh, but you have to like his progress at that right tackle position right now. That's the starting five that I would like to see. Let me know in the comment section if this is the starting five that you want for your, for your Buffalo Bills. And if not, let me know what you would change as well. So again, leave a comment as far as that 
that's concerned. But that is the current offensive line that we had starting out there. The other position battle of note that I want to look at this whole preseason, this whole train camp, that's that punter position, right? A lot of people want to look past the punting position just because, you know, we hope, obviously, we don't use the punter all that much. But you're talking about Corey Bajorgas and Corey Carter both fighting for that punting job for the Buffalo Bills. Remember last season, preseason, Corey Carter tears his ACL in the first game, or the second game of preseason, and so that opens the door for Corey Bajorgas to win that starting job. So Corey Bajorgas does win that starting job, and now there's that competition there. Carter, uh, Corey Carter actually had an inconsistent day, uh, according to most reports, wasn't wasn't doing as well as Bajorgas was, so I think Bajorgas wins day two, uh, but again, I think this is going to be a battle all through camp and all through preseason, especially preseason, it's easier to test and grade people in game time situations, especially punters who, you know, you don't get to see too much in game time situations, when you do see them, you want to make sure it counts, so that's the other position battle of note that I want to talk about today. One more thing, leave it on a good note. Josh Allen really impressed today on third down. So they worked a lot. Uh, uh, day one in camp, they started out working on the red zone. Day two in camp, they spent a lot of time working on third down situational football. That's good to see. That's good to see them working on situational football, working on the important down distance. We even ran some no huddle today in training camp, so that was really good to see. Uh, but Josh Allen really did well on the third down situation. Uh, I'm going to say that the defense probably won when you're talking about the no huddle type offensive plays, but you're going to get the, that's what you're going to get in training camp. The defense is going to win. The offense is going to win. That's what you want to see because, guys, we hope that we have both a top five offense and top five defense, right? And so each day, it's going to be different. Each drive, each series is going to be different. So that is my update from day two of training camp. Again, listen out for uh, Mario from Hashtag Sports. He was there today. Jeremy from www.bewitherstampede.com. He's going to be there over the weekend. Again, giving out these stickers. Again, go to his website, log your entry to win this Andre Reed signed autographed mini helmet uh, and you guys again I wish you best of luck if you do uh, log your entries there but go to www.boilerstampede.com subscribe to Believers Talk for constant updates as far as training camp free agent signings guys I think we're still going to sign some players in here and you know the injury bug isn't going to completely miss us we saw today with uh, Jason Groom it's not going to miss us might lead to some more signings so I'll keep you updated on all of those things keep you updated on who gets cut because the cuts are going to start coming in here probably after the first week of preseason, we'll see who gets cut, who stays on this Buffalo Bills team, makes that 53-man roster. Again, like this video, leave a comment, and after you subscribe, make sure to hit that notification bell to be notified when we have upload new videos, when we go live, whatever the case may be. I look forward to talking to y'all soon. Until I do, go Bills!